Welcome today to Ames Farms. My name is Bob Boltman, and my business is Restore Door Ecological Consulting. And we're going to walk the paths today at Ames Farms uh, on their nice trail system and talk about the native plants and native forest cover and also invasive species and hopefully educate the folks who live here a little bit more about some of the natural wonders that they have here on their property. This little plant here that's just starting to bloom up, this is spotted knapweed, and, and this is the plant that'll get this flower stalk later in the year, and they get kind of a, a nice colored, uh, kind of a, a purple pinkish flower. But this is a plant that actually uh, poisons the soil. It, it's one of those plants that kind of conducts chemical warfare against its neighboring plants. And you're not going to hopefully find this one in the woods. It really doesn't like shade, but it loves these open sunny areas and can really take over. You know, on your large scale, when you're, you know, really talking about your forest preserve and the areas you're trying to protect and whatnot, this may end up falling lower on your, on your priority list. If you were a farmer and you needed forage crop for your animals, this would be very high on your priority list. This is a major, major weed plant in places like Montana and Colorado and places where you have uh, gra grazing lands and even like elk, uh, elk are suffering in cases where this uh, uh, spotted knapweed has gotten away in some of the wild areas out west. Uh, and this is a great example of a beautiful, pristine forest setting that is the reason why we pay attention to invasive species because this, this, this carpet of trilliums and the wild leeks and all the other native wildflowers in here would all suffer with things like garlic mustard uh, being introduced and taking over this area. All right, we've got a, a, a field here. There's a couple, uh, a couple of invasives to think about or be concerned about. This burdock, it's kind of like that, the Velcro burrs that hitchhikers that attach. Um, this isn't the world's worst plant, but some of these thickness, you know, when these are these thick uh, Velcro type birds, they will catch birds and bats. So birds and bats have strangled or, you know, starved to death of being caught in this stuff. Um, it is a non-native, um, and the other non-native that's growing in proliferation here is uh, Dames Rocket. And you see this is actually the first Dames Rocket I've seen this year blooming. This is a nice southerly exposed sunny spot. Um, it is the, it's, in, in the, it's in the mustard family, um, not quite as uh, noxious or invasive as garlic mustard, but it does have uh, that four-petaled cross for a flower, and that's kind of the giveaway. It looks a lot like phlox, so people think, oh, that's just, you know, wild phlox, and, and fortunately this is sold in a lot of seed mixes, and it has that reputation of being, you know, wild phlox, but phlox, P-H-L-O-X, has five letters, has five petals, and typically blooms a little later. Um, and there are different kinds of phlox, but the phlox that, that looks a lot like Dames Rocket is, you know, it'll bloom in the same color and even the same height, and it looks very similar, but a, a discerning eye can tell that, you know, this is uh, not, not phlox. It produces a tremendous amount of seeds, uh, and also, you know, so it can really spread. So this might be another area that might, you know, warrant a little attention. We're lucky enough to be out here at the time of year when the asparagus is coming up, and this is last year's asparagus that sprouted up and flowered and went to seed, and you see these are the, the asparagus seeds that hopefully the birds and wildlife are scattering about. Um, we have a fresh sprout coming up here and one that had come up a little earlier we had a, we had a frost so this actually died back from frost and that's you know kind of a bit of a, in the natural cycle. It'll, it'll, it has enough uh, energy in the roots it'll, it'll continue to put up a few more sprouts. With a clump this size I'm sure there's a nice uh, mass of roots there but you know these asparagus are, are tasty spring treats. Perfect setting. We're here on the shore of uh, Egg Harbor. That's Green Bay out there. Uh, we're on the basically the edge of the Niagara Escarpment, even though we don't have a sheer face of rock right nearby. But this is sort of the prominent, uh, uh, you know, ridge line that gives us the great views of Lake Michigan. And we have a nice uh, bird box here. It's actually designed for bluebirds, but it turns out we happen to have some uh, tree swallow nesting in there. So we've got four little white eggs, and they've used some uh, some goose feathers that they probably got from down on the shore to actually insulate the nest. So we'll leave them be for now. But uh, what a beautiful setting for some tree swallows to, uh, to roost and uh, raise their young.